Welcome back to Race Report, everyone. We have just finished the Russian Grand Prix for 2021 in Sochi. And boy, there is so much to talk about in this race. We've had a cracking couple of races back to back right now. It's been fantastic season overall, hasn't it? Boy, let's get stuck straight in. Firstly, before the weekend got started, we welcomed Kimi Raikkonen back to the paddock after his break due to COVID. That's great to see him back in the car. We also heard that both Leclerc and Verstappen were taking new engines for this race, so we'd be starting from the back of the grid. And we also knew Verstappen had his three-place grid penalty from the collision with Hamilton at Monza. Again, back of the grid. Doesn't matter how many grid places you drop back, back of the grid is back of the grid. We also know that Mercedes have dominated this track. They have won every single race of this Sochi track. Will that be broken this time? We did see some changes that we're not used to this year, uh, particularly with the weather. It was extremely wet to the point where Free Practice 3 was cancelled on Saturday. There was even some talk about qualifying being cancelled as well on that day. Thankfully, that didn't happen but we did get underway on a damp track with the first cars going out on inters and the rain will play a part in every single step of this race. It was fascinating. Unfortunately, the early parts of qualifying were hampered a little bit. Uh, for instance, Verstappen didn't even bother to set a time in Q1. He knew he had the penalties. He knew he was starting at the back of the grid, so he decided not to run the car at all. So that's a bit of a shame because... Uh, the fans who went to see him, you know, at least do a few laps, never got to see that. And it automatically filled one of those spots in Q1 for drivers going out as well. Leclerc was very similar, however he did take part in Q1, he gave the fans a show at least. Then chose not to drive in Q2 due to his penalty as well. Again, taking up one of those slots that we'd usually see other drivers occupy. There was a couple of surprises in Q2, most notably Gasly and Vettel. Gasly is just so consistent that we see him in Q3 now, so it was a big shock to see him out. I think Vettel also lost out to Science by a tiny, tiny margin. But it was great to see George Russell getting into Q3 in the Williams again. That's fantastic to see them doing so well. The slick tyres did finally see some use in Q3. Everyone seemed to go out on a first run, like a banker run, on the Inters just to get some time set, and Hamilton was on pole position with those times. And then they came in, got slick tyres to see if they could go even faster. But this is where it got a little bit tricky, especially for the Mercedes. Hamilton came in, hit the wall on the pit lane entry, so they had to replace the front wing, the tyres, oh, it was a whole palaver, getting him sent back out. And of course, that held Bottas up, so he could only get serviced after Hamilton had uh, had his wing replaced and everything like that. Which meant the Mercedes only got one good lap on their slick tyres. Most other teams chose to do two runs on the slick tyres. You know, build some heat into it on the first lap and then bam, good lap on the second. And that's exactly what we saw. Everybody who qualified well built the heat into their slick tyres on the first lap and then did the real lap on their second lap. But of course, the Mercedes only got one lap. So they did not improve on their times, even though they'd switched to slick tires. Which of course meant we got a fantastic lineup on the grid with Norris qualifying on pole, Sainz in second place, and then George Russell in third in the Williams. Oh, it's brilliant. Great grid. Great grid. Hamilton was down in fourth thanks to his banker lap on the intermediate tires. But boy, were we in for a brilliant start to the race. Onto the Sunday, and before the race even got started, it was announced that Bottas would be taking a new engine, dropping him to 16th on the grid. Some saw this as a tactical change from Mercedes to try and slow down Verstappen's progression through the field, and others just saw it as Mercedes are struggling a bit with their engines. We do know that a lot of the teams using Mercedes engines are having to use more than their allocated allotment, dropping them back quite a bit. Personally, I think it's a bit of both. Bottas probably did need a new engine, but it never hurts to be slowing down the championship rival, does it now? <laughs> 
We saw a dry start to the race. However, we were warned and continue to be warned throughout the race that rain could happen at any moment. It was a mix of medium and hard tire starts up and down the grid, but the top five crucially were starting on the medium set of tires. Off the line, it was a jam packed start with Sainz taking the lead after an initial poor start, but he picked up an amazing slipstream and then catapulted past Norris. Stroll managed to move up three places to fourth. Hamilton dropped all the way back down to seventh. And when all eyes moved toward the back of the grid to see how far Verstappen moved up, he'd only actually moved up to 17th. The big winner was actually Charles Leclerc, who moved up to 12th. It's a big result for Charles Leclerc there, instead of Verstappen, who was the guy we were expecting to do that. But Verstappen does gently move through the traffic, as you'd expect, picking off people one at a time. And it only takes till lap six before Verstappen overtakes Bottas. Which is a big shock, you'd think Bottas would put up more of a defence for his teammate and just because they're both in very quick cars. I did write down in my notes that Bottas' defence was questionable. And I think sadly what I meant by that was it didn't exist, as in he didn't hold him up at all. Mercedes will be very disappointed in that. We did kind of enter a period of the race where people were looking after fuel and their tyres and there was just multiple DRS trains around the track that kept everybody running in similar orders for a little while, but we did have terrific battles out in front between Norris and Sainz. Norris managed to catch up back to Sainz. Big fight there for the lead. That was brilliant. And there was a few fights up and down as well, which is really good to keep things going. Lance Stroll was actually the first man to pit on lap 13. He was looking for the undercut and it did pay off for him. Russell pitted to try and cover up off, but Stroll's undercut was just too powerful. So Russell came out behind Stroll and Stroll had now effectively taken third place on the track. On that same lap, we also saw Lando Norris overtake Carlos Sainz on the track. Norris now back in the lead of the Grand Prix. This triggered Sainz to come into the pits on lap 15 from second place. He and the team clearly saw the pace from Stroll on that powerful undercut. So by pitting on lap 15, he stayed out in front, but only just. At this point, the field was split between those trying to do a one-stop strategy and those that were looking to do a two-stop. The McLarens and Hamilton stay out to do a one-stop strategy. Those who have stopped come out behind Verstappen, therefore bringing him up into the points in sixth place now. At this point in the race, it's Norris leading from Ricardo, a McLaren 1-2 again with Hamilton in third. But Ricardo is the next man to blink, comes into the pit stop, and it's a slow, slow stop. Oh, gutting for Ricardo, especially after the race win last time out. He's now had a slow stop, and that actually drops him back behind Sainz, Straw, and Russell all the way down in 13th. Hamilton chose to stay out during that time to capitalize on Ricardo's stop. He does finally pit, though, on lap 27, and Verstappen pits on the very same lap. They come out in ninth for Hamilton and 12th for Verstappen. They're nearly neck and neck on the track at this point. Norris also does the same, pits on lap 29 and he's away well and back out in fourth, only behind the guys who haven't stopped yet. A good stop for Norris and that keeps him in relative first place. After this point, we see Hamilton go on a charge though. It was great to see. He got past Stroll, Science, and Gasly all within, I think, maybe one lap, probably two laps. It was incredible. It was around this point, around lap 30-ish, when we started to see the guys who pit stopped early, like Stroll and Sainz and Russell, they started to fall away a little bit. And the guys who were pitted later, like Norris and Hamilton, are really coming into their own. But there are still guys out there that have not stopped. For instance, Perez is leading the Grand Prix, not stopped. Alonso, second place, not stopped. But they do choose to do so on lap 37. This releases Norris back into the lead and Hamilton in second place. And it's just them two to have a ding dong battle at this point. Perez's stop is actually very slow as well. The team's still getting used to this new mechanic for the pit stops. And he drops down to fifth place. Not ideal for Red Bull. And what's more, he comes out in front of Verstappen. Again, also not ideal for Red Bull. 
So the current order after all the pit stops have been completed is Norris from Hamilton from Sainz in third place. An interesting thing at this point is it appears that Perez has become the lead Red Bull car. He is chasing down Ricardo and Sainz for third place. While Verstappen seems to be slipping back, he's lost a place to Alonso. He's back on seventh now. At this point, it's very realistic for Red Bull to get a podium, but it's with Perez rather than Verstappen. But then it happens. The late drama, that weather that we've been teased about, all oh, race, it might be coming, it might be coming. It finally arrives. Lap 46 of 53, there is late drama as rain starts falling. Initially, very light, only on certain sections of the track. So the guys stay on dry tires. However, Norris does slide off on a damp track at one section. Hamilton right up behind him now. On lap 48 is the first call for Inters. We start seeing the guys who can afford to take a gamble doing so. But both Norris and Hamilton crucially stay out on dry tires. And this is where it kind of gets a bit bonkers. There's so much happening out on track as it does when it goes from dry to wet. It was hard to keep up. We saw Vettel and Stroll hit each other multiple times, but both managed to continue. We saw Stroll slide off and go into the barriers, managed to continue. Gasly spun round as well. Leclerc went off the track. Oh, it was mayhem. The guys who had stayed out on the slick tires were having a terrible time and plummeting down the order compared to the guys who switched to Inters. Hamilton does finally pit for Inters after what felt like an age. It was probably only one lap or two laps, but it felt like an age. Hamilton pitted for Inters. He said, track felt good, felt dry, grip was there. However, it was the team that said, the weather will be getting worse. Come in, get your Inters, you'll win. And very, very crucially, Norris did the opposite. He said, feels fine, feels great, grip's there. Let's keep going. And he stayed out on the slicks. And it's at this point that the race is won and lost. Norris can't keep it on the track anymore. It is too wet for slick tires. He's just sliding all over the place. Does actually really well to keep it out of the barriers on a couple of occasions. But on lap 50, with three laps to go, Hamilton had 25 seconds to make up on Norris. In a normal Grand Prix, that's impossible. You just can't make up that kind of distance. Hamilton did it inside one lap because the conditions had got that bad. So while Norris is sliding about off track, Hamilton shoots off into the lead. Norris manages to admit defeat and trundle back to the pit lane on lap 52. One lap from the end, he comes back to the pit lane, drops back to eighth. Such a shame for him. But while that's all going on, from nowhere, Verstappen is now P2. Literally, I do not know how that happened. He had a lot of cars to get through to make that happen. So that's incredible. And honestly, the top 10 overall has changed massively due to the rainfall and the changing of the tires and when people change tires. Oh, it's such a complicated mess. But out in front, it was that key call to Hamilton. Hamilton said, no, the grip's good. Mercedes said, you're coming in because the weather will get worse. When Norris said the grip is good, McLaren did not force him to come in. That was the key call, and it's such a shame for Norris. In the end, Hamilton comes home to win his 100th race. What an incredible achievement. That's monumental. He's been made to work for it, and he's been made to wait a while for it, but congratulations to Lewis Hamilton. 100 race wins, and he also has the lead back in the Drivers' Championship. Verstappen manages to come home in P2. I don't quite know how Red Bull managed to pull that one off, but that's also a massive coup for them. Come from the back of the grid to second place. That's a great job. They really minimized how many points they lost there to Hamilton. And they took a new power unit as well, which Hamilton's going to probably have to do later on in the season. And then Sainz came home in P3. He was an ever present at the front throughout this entire race. He did a really good job on Saturday and he did a really good job on Sunday and he deserves to be on that podium as well. When you look down the top 10, there are a few surprises as well. So a shout out to both Kimi Raikkonen, who comes back from COVID, instantly scores some points in eighth place. And George Russell, again scoring points for Williams. 
it's like you we waited so many years for Williams to score points and now they just can't stop every race it seems like they're scoring points but congratulations to both Alpha and Williams those are both good point scores there so well done to them what an ending to a race such a thrilling ending that I could not take my eyes away from it and it just goes to show that anything can happen in Formula 1 even in the final 10 laps or so hell even in the final three laps what an ending brilliant I would have loved to have seen Lando win and it's a bit of a shame but that's how these things go hopefully he'll bounce back he's definitely shown he's got the pace to win a race so hopefully it'll come in the future what did you guys think of the race do you think this one ranks up there as one of the most interesting we've had from Sochi so far since its introduction? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching that video. I really do appreciate the support. If you want to see more from me, I'm going to put a couple of extra videos on the left hand side of the screen here for you. Just go ahead and click on one of those. On the right hand side of the screen, I'm going to put a subscribe button. If you want to support me and support the channel, I very much appreciate it. Thank you.